name is Massimo Guarini and I'm the creative director and founder of Boutique Game Studio of Sonico, based in Italy. Well, I come from the AAA uh, business. Uh, I spent most of my career working for big publishers and, and enormous teams. And I felt the urge at a certain point in my career to move towards uh, uh, smaller productions in order to be able to probably uh, address some something that I felt was missing on the market. So I started making, in, in a way, making video games for myself. And that um, was an incredibly important moment for me because I think it made me realize that video games can be used as a really powerful expression tool to go beyond what's merely considered just, you know, gameplay mechanics or just uh, a challenge with a goal. So gameplay mechanics can be I, I, I discovered myself incredibly powerful expression tools. And that's the reasoning behind Obasonico. That's the motivation that pushed me to uh, create my own independent studio. I, I had like to work in Europe, in Italy, in Canada, and in Japan. That was my personal dream, actually. And then I came back to Europe to found my own studio. And that was surely something that uh, I recon has had a great impact on my, um, on my career and my uh, understanding of the video game industry as a whole. I think um, I managed to probably grab the best from the, the Western way of doing games and the Japanese way of doing games. So, in a way, Japan has taught me about, um, you know, uh, considering creativity in a, in, a, in a sort of like different angle that we're used to in the West, because like uh, Japanese culture as a whole is very much based on visual arts and, and visual minimalism as opposed to Western culture that video games especially relies on realism. So the clash between do, these two different cultures allowed me to uh, create a style that I, I don't know, I feel like it's becoming more and more personal and also allowed me to see how differently games have been making in, in, in the West and in Japan. So um, uh, Japan has also taught me that there's a it, there can be in video games a very much authorial approach to, to the content. While uh, in the West, and I'm talking about six to seven years ago anyways, um, games were more like a product being made and coming out of a factory cycle, right? Uh, that was really eye-opening for me. And that happened exactly when the indie movement started to be uh, kind of relevant for the industry as a whole and authorial game design and authors within games, a little bit like what happened with movies where we have directors that are really well known as authorial creators of the whole, of the whole thing, started to make sense in the video game business as well. And that had an impact in terms of content creation because it allowed people to be a little bit more personal with what they wanted to say and express through video games. And in fact, we started to see um, games tackling really, really new subjects that we were not used to. My inspiration normally doesn't come from, from other video games. Uh, that's probably because I'm growing older and I have kids, I have a family, and I don't have much time to play video games anymore. But also, in part, even if that might sound a little strange, uh, it's because I don't really find um, games that are really, really interesting for me as a you know 42 years old guy that probably uh, has played a lot of video games in his life and is basically probably a little bit tired of shooting at dinosaurs or you know saving uh, planets from, from distractions and, th and things like that. So um, it's interesting to know that this is happening also because we're, it's the first time in the history of the video game industry that we see both creators and the audience growing older. So it's the first time in history that we have 60 years old game creators and 50 years old game designers and we also have 40, 50 and 60 years old game players. So, you know, it never really happened. So video games were used to be crafted and designed around the notion that they would be targeting, uh, you know, male, young audience with uh, a kind of like standard set of interests. This is changing and older creators are actually trying to tackle different subjects. Older audiences are kind of, kind of finding themselves alienated from the market. And I strongly believe that this is going to be the future of the video game market. It's going to, uh, definitely need to have a horizontal expansion in terms of audience. And, and that is exactly when content will basically uh, prevail over technology and over technical novelties. Uh, that's also, for me, it's very exciting and that's where I normally 
also get inspiration from. I get insp my inspiration from everyday life and, and human facts and, and things that happen to me on, on, on even the more, most mundane and unusual things are for me a sort of inspiration for what I do. Last Day of June comes from, as an inspiration from a song, from a Stephen Wilson song called Drive Home. I bumped into that video uh, casually some years ago and I was really uh, blown away by the, uh, the beauty of the animation and the overall mood of the story and the music as well because it's a very uh, touchy uh, melody that mixes major and minor tones in a very very clever way. I immediately started thinking about how beautiful that be to actually craft an interactive experience about the notion of melancholy. Melancholy to me is one of the most beautiful emotions that for, for that a human being can have and that grew on me as a sort of like journey of a normal guy like me and you that has to deal with a tragedy in his life and it's a journey that leads to ultimately acceptance but it's a journey through regret basically. I don't like to say it's the five stages of grief because that's not really what the game is all about but it's more like a personal journey of a normal guy, of a normal human being that tries to you know, accept somehow a tragedy in his life and specifically the loss of his wife. I'm, I'm really thrilled about this new category, the Games Beyond Entertainment category, because it really proves that something is changing. And something is changing in the right way, I think, because like uh, being able to use our own dictionary and not the movie's dictionary, which is gameplay mechanics, right? In a way that we can express uh, concepts and meanings and emotion, it's absolutely uh, amazing and that's what the game industry needs to be uh, in the next future. I mean, the problem is never what we have in terms of products, it's what we don't have. So I, I really see that we need to expand in that direction. And also, um, going beyond entertainment is a way to, um, you know, use our own diction interactive dictionary to talk a universal language and that universal language is the language of emotions in the same exact way that music does movies are doing and literature as a whole are capable of uh, video games today through the gameplay mechanics and through the player agency and, and through the interaction itself and not just through the story or dialogues that's more like for movies is are capable of transmitting emotions of resonating with people in a more universal way. So going beyond the notion of the gameplay mechanic per se as a challenge, so going beyond the notion of entertainment is one of the most beautiful things that can happen to, the, to this industry. And for this reason, and being the, this the first time that the, the category gets introduced at the BAFTA, I'm incredibly honored to be part of it. Well, my advice for story writers, screenwriters, or even game designers to, is to approach video games as um, not just trying to create a challenge, but try to use the, your vocabulary, the gameplay mechanics, like Lego blocks in a way, to create some, to express a notion of something, a meaning. And that's, you know, gameplay can be really powerful because there's player agency behind it, it there's, you know, the player has to take decisions and he can interact with things and systems but don't stop on the surface on it it's not just about the system and it's not just about how high you jump or like you know these rules are definitely important and the, there is a huge logical word behind it but you have to go beyond these things and you need to actually use these things as your, as your expression tool so please don't uh, just write a story and then try to apply that story to a gameplay mechanic. Please don't start with gameplay mechanic and then try to, mm, let's make sense out of it and then write a story for it. I mean, this is just like trying to, you know, connect to things that are not done for each other. So try to tell a story. My advice is try to tell a story through the gameplay mechanics. Try to make the player um, fill the gaps by itself. Uh, by providing him little dots here and there through the gameplay and, 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 and the gameplay agency that he will be eventually able to connect and to come up with um, an interpretation of the whole story. Well, there's, there's a lot of uh, recent independent games that I admire and, and, and I'm not really sure if I'm taking inspiration from those or not. Uh, there's just one game that for me was a kind of like uh, milestone for the game industry uh, and that it really struck me really hard s somehow, and that was Ico, for me the way that I I know it's a very old game, but I believe that was one of the first time in history where 
Um, play win the game character was done through an emotional approach and not just through, you know, a normal goal. Like, if we also remember uh, the time it came out and the type of comp competition that was on the market, Haiku was completely a different story. And that for me started this whole, uh, you know, opening movement towards uh, emotions towards um, a more rational approach, a more human approach, I, I, would, I would say, to, to, to characters and to storytelling. And, and today we're, I'm really happy, super happy to see that there's like an enormous amount of new independent game, game developers that are actually trying to, to express themselves. You know, it's just a matter of time before we see these things coming up to, to the mainstream. And also game, game, video games as a whole need to become more mainstream than, than they are today, because we're still talking to a very vertical audience of core gamers and passionate gamers, but for example, my mother couldn't play video games, it's complicated for her, and that's a pity.